Uh, I, I follow you on uh, I follow you on Twitter. You're Thank great. you. You're funny. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I was uh, I saw that you really got into the World Cup this year. Are you a big uh, soccer fan or football fan? Love the World Cup. You do. Oh, I love the World Cup. And I like soccer. I was more of a Gaelic football guy. Have you ever seen? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's a... right. Four people. <laughs> that's a rough. Uh... Gaelic football is an a sport they just play in Ireland. It's played a lot by farmers, um, people from the, the countryside, very rural, yeah. um, very rough, brutal, but beautiful, like a big wave, <laughs> or <laughs> having a... Having wow. a it's fantastic. Having yeah. a statue fall on your nuts or something. But <laughs> oh, wow. It's quite strong. It's, it's, I have a lot of injuries from it. Broke my nose a couple of times. This finger is the different size than this finger. Different kind of uh, ankles, and I have the skeletal structure of a very old giraffe. But, <laughs> but great sport. <laughs> oh, the great try sport. It. You should definitely yeah, try if that. You like yeah. wrestling or death. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you, who you, you? You watched the World Cup, and so you're tweeting uh, live when France won. Yes, I was uh, happy to see them win. That yeah, they good. Were... I, the last time they won uh, was in 1998, and I was living in Paris. And the whole thing was in Paris. That's right. And so that was quite exciting. Well, I mean, they just partied like crazy. It was pretty big. I was, I was working in an Irish bar at the time. And trying to get home was kind of tricky afterwards. And kind of a million people went out onto the street. And they shut down the subway. And there was no traffic and everything. And so we, you know, we were pretty tanked. And... Um, we went looking for somewhere to sleep because we were never going to make it back to our place. So we walked to the river and we tried to get on somebody's boat. <laughs> and, uh, and this guy kind of jumped out and uh, he was like, Oh no, ma famille, uh, sur le bateau. Uh, which means my family are on the boat. Um, oh, so you can't sleep with it, yeah. So he said, uh, but the dinghy. And he had a dinghy out the back of the boat, and we slept on his dinghy. <laughs> Six of us, because he was French, as you could probably yeah, tell. Yeah, by... that was a good accent. Yeah, I could tell, yeah. Um, For and a second, then... I thought he might have been... <laughs> it was good, right? Mexican. No, that's... it was great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I don't know a lot of French, <laughs> no. but that's tra tra it. Trabajo sounds like a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, and so we slept on the dinghy and then kind of woke up the next morning and somebody pulling off this kind of sheet that they put over us, this rubberized sheet that we wouldn't get drowned. And, um, and the Eiffel Tower was there. And we were like, this is living. This is... I mean, that's the way to do we're, it. We're in heaven. Um, <laughs> heaven is in... It's French. Is that right? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Very interesting. I mean, they've been telling us for a while. Why were you in uh, Paris? Were you uh, vacationing there? You know, it was, it was odd. I went um, on a show not unlike this. Uh, there's a show in Ireland called The Late Late Show, which is a, a really long-running talk show. And they do this thing where the host does kind of an opera throughout the course of the show where he's like, oh, and we've got, like, this stuff and everybody in the audience could have one. You should do that, by the way. That would play well. <laughs> Gin and blood. <laughs> <laughs> gin and blood. Yeah. Um, but they the did like it. Yeah. They did this thing where they said, "Okay, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got tickets for this ferry that are going from Rosslare in Ireland to to France to Cherbourg, and we've got four tickets for everybody in the audience." And we were kind of drunk students at the time, and so sixteen of us headed off on a ferry to France for a day. We said, "Okay, we will go for a day." It was kind of a booze cruise kind of a thing. And we arrived in France, and I'd never been abroad. I'd never been out of the country before. I was probably 19. And I thought, oh, it's nice. They've, they've got bread and wine and <laughs> cheese and all of this kind of stuff. And I said, let's go to Paris for the day. Everybody with me? And everybody was like, no. So I went to Paris on my own and ended up staying for five months. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? This is the great story. It, it was kind of wild, I suppose, looking back on it. But <laughs> wow. I thought, OK, well, I'll go and see a couple of the sites, and then I'll go back on the train and get back on the ferry and go home. So I went to the Eiffel Tower, and I was walking around, and I was about to jump back on the train to go home. And somebody went, Chris! <laughs> and it was a girl that I knew from home who had been on a, some exchange program. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm, ab I'm about to go home as well, but let's go out tonight. 
And, um, and so we went out that night and we went into this cocktail bar on the Champs-Elysees and it was the wildest place I've ever seen. I was quite green, I think, and hadn't been away so much. And so I asked them for a job and they kind of panned me off and said, no, 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 you can't have a, no, we don't need anybody. And I was like, but I'm really good at cocktails, <laughs> which <laughs> was not so much the case. But uh, <laughs> I've never done it. Never, obviously, drinking never. Drinking it, but no. not making it. No. Yeah. And uh, and they said, well, come in for an interview tomorrow. And so I said, okay. And I went in, and the guy didn't turn up. And I was kind of went over, and I was like, is Marco here? And this lady was like, no, I'm the day manager. Marco doesn't work during the day. And I was like, what a dick, just to <laughs> tell me to come. And so I, it was kind of crazy because the World Cup had just started, and I was going over and talking to her, and somebody just dropped a, a whole tray of drinks and I was like, there's a little thing going on here. And she said, why are you here? And I said, I'm supposed to start work today. <laughs> and she said, oh God, why he never tells me anything. So she's mad at him too. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, okay, we'll grab a t-shirt. And, and so she gave me a t-shirt and I got behind the bar. And uh, it was like, it was, it was a big bar and there was a bunch of people and there was one guy from Ireland there and I was like, dude, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and he's like, that's okay, just pull pints and I'll make the cocktails and we'll work it out. And then that night, Marco comes in, the manager for the thing, and he's like, what the hell are you doing behind the bar? And I was like, well, I did the interview with Annalise. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're a genius. You are a genius. <laughs> Yeah, Why that not? was crazy. That's How the kind of stuff you do when you're 19, I, I when you're 19, gosh. Yeah, fun uh, time. Well, I, I got to say, we had your pal Rose Byrne, uh, your co-star. Oh, you had her on. She was on the show. Did she say nice things about me? Yeah, absolutely, she definitely <laughs> did. Uh, Juliet Naked is the name of the film. Yes. And I, I explain this film. You're obsessed with uh, Ethan Hawke. Is it? That's right. Ethan Hawke plays a, uh, a singer-songwriter from the 80s, 90s, kind of a Jeff Buckley type of figure that I'm obsessed with. I'm a huge fan. Rose and I are together in the film. And I, he releases a new album, his first in 20 years. He's this recluse. And I'm, I don't treat her very well. I'm kind of just this kind of nerdy, music-y guy. Yeah. And she, you know, deserves better. And so I kind of, I'm more in love with him, really, than I am with her. And we track him down, and it doesn't go very well for me. Not for you, but... No. But it goes but well. They, they get on great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's a good, like, romantic comedy. Jesse Peretz yes. uh, directs it. it. It's fantastic. It's a really fun movie, yeah. Uh, and the music's great. You're great uh, in, in everything I've seen you in. Uh, Get Shorty is also you're very funny in as well. Oh, thank you. This yes. is on uh, Epics, and we just had your co-star Ray Romano. Was just did he say nice things? About yes, me? he did. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, every week we have people that like you. Uh, just talk about you, and eventually we get you on the show. Uh, but he really did. Ray Ray's the best. He's one of the funniest human uh, beings. Yeah. Like whatever he's even saying, he just read a phone book and make you laugh. He's got the best voice. He really. He's got a voice. I don't know. He, you know, it's like a dog waking up. You know. <laughs> Where he's going to... <laughs> Dog waking up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. Uh, but he's great. He's so funny in the show. And... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but he's great. He plays kind of like... Um, I love working with him because he's, he's very present and he's kind of still always looking for a punchline and is so kind of smart. And he plays desperation better than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> and in a way that makes you feel like, oh, maybe he's quite desperate. <laughs> and then you kind of go to his mansion and you're like, nah, he's doing all right. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's doing, doing just right. fine, yeah. yeah but exactly. he's the best, I've got the uh, it's so a, much it's, time a for great, him. Uh, it's a great series. It's almost like uh, watching a movie, but it, it, that's uh, well done. Yeah. It's directed and shot. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. on and on and on. Uh, I said. And it's on and on and on.